Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. In today's video we are going to talk about certifications and more specifically I'm going to talk about the CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst Plus or the CYSA Plus as you prefer to call it and the reason why I'm doing this video it's because last week I've passed the exam so I thought it would be a good idea to share my opinion on the certification uh, which study resources did I use, how did I study for it, and also some information on the exam without disclosing anything I shouldn't, of course. So let's just get started with why the CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst Plus. Since I already had the CompTIA Security Plus, I had two options if I wanted to follow CompTIA certification path. I could either choose between the Pentest Plus or the CYSA Plus. And that brings an interesting question, which is, me being a penetration tester, why wouldn't I choose the Pentest Plus over the CYSA Plus? And well, for me, when it comes to penetration testing certifications, I pretty much prefer the ones that involve a more hands-on environment instead of a multiple choice based approach. And that's the case for both Pentest Plus and the CYSA Plus. But then, if you think about it, I think the, the Pentest Plus hasn't been updated since 2018 or something like that. And the CompTIA CYSA Plus just got updated last year, so that was also a big factor for me. But then overall, the most important thing for me was actually that I wanted to learn a little bit more about the defensive side of cybersecurity. And that includes incident response. Um, forensics, security monitoring, and I was really hyped to get the opportunity to understand a little bit more about all those concepts. And these were the main reasons why I decided to do this certification. And now let's talk a little bit about which study resources did I use. I used many study resources for this certification, and in my opinion some of those were not that good. But in this video I'm just going to focus on the ones that I think will help you the most when it comes to getting prepared for the actual exam. And so, starting off with the one I use the most, and I have it here, it is the CompTIA CYSA Plus Study Guide from Cybex. And I absolutely love this book because it was really easy to go through. And to go along with it, I would also highly recommend the Cybex Practice Tests book, which has more than 1000 questions and 2 exams for you to practice on. And the reason I don't have it here physically, it's because I got the digital version. And finally, the last resource I want to mention, it is the CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst Plus from Jason Dion on Udemy. And now that I've showed you my study resources, I want to get into the most important thing for me, which is the study methodology. So the first thing I did was actually to read the study guide from cover to cover just to go through all the material first. And as I was doing that, I decided to create my own flashcards, as you can see here. And the last time I counted them, there were like 300 flashcards or something crazy like that, which is a lot. But the reason I decided to create these flashcards was because I got completely overwhelmed with the amount of stuff that I had to get familiar with. And I'm talking about specific tools, methodologies, technologies, uh, procedures, standards, protocols, and so much stuff. And by creating these flashcards and by going through them a lot, I was able to absorb all this information a lot quicker. After that, I started testing myself by using the 1000 questions from the Cybex Practice Tests book I mentioned before, and things were actually going pretty well. I was scoring around 80% on all the questions, and also something that was really helpful was that all the questions were divided by chapters, which helped me a lot finding where were my weak links at this point. After finding those weak links, I decided that I was going to read the study guide for the second time. And the main difference this time was that I was not going to create flashcards or anything like that. Instead, this time I was going to take as much notes as I could on every key concept. And the reason I decided to do that is because I really wanted to make sure that I was getting familiar and comfortable with every concept instead of just trying to memorize everything. And that was key when it comes to preparation for the actual exam. 
The last thing I did were the practice exams. Both books had two practice exams each, and those four exams were the ones that I found to be the best when comparing to the actual real exam. And that's basically it. After scoring around 90% on all the exams, I decided that I was ready to go for it. Now, you may be thinking that I forgot about Jason Dion's Udemy course, but that's not the case. It's just that I only used it for on-the-go study sessions. So whenever I was doing the dishes, cooking, running, or even walking the dog, I would watch or just listen to the videos, and I think that was really helpful as a complimentary resource. Now, this is crucial for everyone who's trying to get the certification. Please, do not underestimate this exam. And the reason why I'm saying that, it's because many people can think that the exam will be just a walk in a park, only because it is based on multiple choice questions. And that's definitely not the case. If you go to the exam thinking like that, this exam will absolutely kick your butt. Now, one thing that I was able to understand after doing it, is that almost all the questions are based in real life scenarios. So this is not your typical multiple choice based exam in which you read a book and then try to memorize all the tools and acronyms and then just throw them at the exam like a brain dump. This was really a tough one and it took me three weeks of studying just to get prepared for it. After that disclaimer, the best advice I can give you is to try to understand the concepts the best way you can instead of focusing on memorizing things. Because most of the questions will ask you for the best answer regarding a very specific situation or real life scenario. So they will ask you for the best methodologies, the best tools, the best procedures, and the way you can know what's the best solution for every situation is by being comfortable with the concept and by analyzing the advantages and disadvantages from all the options they give you to choose from. The last thing I would like to suggest is to leave the performance-based questions for the end. Just flag them at the beginning and then go through the rest of the exam. I also did this on Security Plus and I really think that is helpful to do so. Because in my opinion, it is easier to do the performance-based questions after you go through all the multiple choice-based questions. And there's no reason at all to be worried about these performance-based questions. Uh, in my case, they were pretty easy and the only reason I took some time to resolve them was because I was carefully checking if I was responding to everything correctly. And that's it for today. I hope this video can help you if you're going for the CYSA Plus certification and keep in mind that Earning that certificate and that badge is not as important as it is to keep learning and getting better at what you're doing. If you have any questions or if you think I missed something I should have mentioned here, please let me know in the comment section below and thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!